understand and he lifted you out so I remember when you were back then and thank him for where you are now give him the glory for what he's done in your heart he took you from sin Savior's feet. Do you remember when with all your heart you longed to serve him? But you didn't think that Jesus could use someone like you. Oh, but look how we used your love. You out. So remember where you were back then and praise him for where you are now. Give him the glory for what he's done in your heart. He took you from sin and strife and gave. And he made you complete. So take off those crowns of glory and cast them at the Savior's feet. So take off those crowns of glory and cast them at the Savior's feet. Sing real loud, okay? My God is awesome. He can move a mountain, keep me in the valley, and hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength when I've been weak and praise His holy name. My God is awesome. He can move a mountain, keep me in the valley, and hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, heals me when I'm broken, strength where I've been weak, and praise His holy name. I'm glad that we serve an awesome God, and uh, man, I'm glad we serve a God like no other. There's no other religion like we have, no other God, and uh, I love our Lord. I like this song right here, and uh, I've been singing this this morning, so I'm going to sing it. I'm glad this world's not all there is. One of these days we get to get out of here, and I'm looking forward to seeing our, our Lord and Savior. I didn't see him in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. I didn't see him feed the thousands with just some fish and five loaves. I didn't see him walk on water or calm the raging sea, but I felt his mighty power when he set my spirit free. And one day I'll see him and look on his face and I'll thank him and praise him for his marvelous grace and I'll hear him say child enter in oh one day I'll see him I didn't Hear him praying, Father, not in my will. 
I didn't see him hanging there on top of Calvary's hill. I didn't see him conquer death or win the victory, but I know that he lives, cause he lives within me, and one day I'll see him and look on his face, and I'll thank him and praise him for his marvelous grace, and I'll hear him say, child, enter in, oh, one day I'll see him and look on his face, and I'll thank him and praise him for his marvelous grace, and I'll hear him say, child, enter in. coming to church. That's my favorite place to be. I'd, I'd, there's no other place in the world I'd rather be right now than when I'm standing. I mean that. I mean that. I love going to church. Well, I want you to, I'm going to turn the book of, uh, book of John this morning. I want you to go to John 14. And, well, I've been here a few times, and uh, but since I've been here last, I've started doing something kind of new. I've been uh, started doing impressions, and I have. Don't look at me like that. I'm telling you the truth. I've been doing impressions. You say, well, you're crazy. We'll just hang on. You ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, I have been doing impressions. The other day I was at the house, brother, I was doing the impression of a flamingo. And my wife got mad at me, and I had to put my foot down. So anyway. <laughs> that's the best I got right there. That's awesome. That's the funniest joke I got. Man, that's hilarious. I've told that joke a thousand times, and I laugh every time I tell it because it's so funny. Man. We got to get in the Bible. <laughs> John 14, if you found your place, let's all stand. And if you'll come back tonight, I'll tell you a joke just as funny as that one, all right? And uh, I don't know how the preaching is going to be, but the jokes are out of this world. <laughs> Brother Chris is never going to let me come back. John 14, verse number 6 is where we're going to go. But I can't go to John 14 and not read the first part. Let's just start at verse number 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. And whither I go you know, and the way you know. That's where I want to stop right here, and I want to sit down for a minute. And Thomas saith unto him, Lord, you got to love Thomas. Come on now. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? What a question that right there is. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Some of the most familiar scriptures of, in all the Bible in our world, but I love it. I, I love it every time I read it. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Thank you for standing this morning. You can be seated. And man, I sure do love my Bible. I sure do love it. I said in Sunday school, I was talking about, we went over Matthew chapter 7, and I started talking about you ought to listen to every word that's in this Bible. Amen, right there. You ought to listen to every word. But there's some words you really ought to listen to. Now, you may think I'm wrong with that, but there's some words I perk up. And that's those words in red. That's what Jesus said. That's Jesus answering that question. Right here in our text, Jesus made this statement that's so familiar that, it's, that everybody knows I am the way, the truth, and the life. But why did Jesus make this statement? Well, in our text, we see why. Because Thomas asked one of the most important questions that you could ever ask in your entire life. And that is, how can I know the way? How can we know the way? And Jesus comes back with an unbelievable statement of I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I believe this is one of the greatest gospel texts in all of our Bible is where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He, he leaves no question. Oh, yeah. 
He leaves no question to what he's saying. He is absolute. He is sure. I love how Jesus speaks because he leaves no question. He's specific. Can I say this real fast? I'm, I'm really not there yet, but I'm going to say this. Hey, he's sure. He's specific. There's no back door to heaven. There's one way. That's Jesus Christ. Right here, Thomas asked, though, I would say maybe the most important question you could ask, and that is how can we know the way? Here's what's interesting if you look at our verses here. Jesus answered Thomas's question at the very start of his statement. Thomas said, how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. But just to be real honest with you, Jesus could have stopped when he said, I am the way. And he would answer Thomas' question. Now, really, if you'll get real honest with it, Jesus could have said, I am. And stopped, and stopped right there. How can we know the way? Jesus could have looked at Thomas and said, I am. But he didn't say that. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He added to it. He went above. He went beyond what uh, he went beyond what Thomas thought. <laughs> well, yeah, that's pretty good right there. He went beyond what Thomas thought the answer was going to be. Ain't that just our Lord? He goes above and beyond. He goes so much farther than your expectations. Thomas said, how can we know the way? And Jesus could have said, I am. He could have said, I am the way, but he didn't stop there. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know why? I just say like Paul said it. Now in him that's able, now in him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. So what are you talking about? Jesus goes above and beyond. He goes farther. He goes farther. Ain't you glad Jesus goes farther? Good night. Ain't you glad Jesus gives you more than you deserve? He goes above and beyond. Yes, he does. Every day with Jesus is better than the day before. Yes, it is. I'm only 25, but I sure can say that. He's better today than he was yesterday. I can't explain it. I just know that he is. He goes above and beyond. He goes above and beyond. I sure am glad that he goes farther. He exceeds my expectations. Can anybody say that he exceeds your expectations this morning? Man, ain't you glad God ain't, oh well, ain't you glad God ain't a disappointment? Ain't there enough of those in this life? God ain't never one time let me down. God ain't never one time disappointed me. He's always went above what I expected of him. I sure am glad for that. I like the old song that says, It gets sweeter as the days go by. Oh, it gets sweeter as the moments fly. I say it like this. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. I want to look at this text right here where Jesus answers Thomas's question. But he don't just answer his question. He answers two more. And I want to look at those three questions here. The first question that he answers, and I hope you'll stay with me. I, I took him out commercial break. You may think this is going to be elementary this morning, but that would be all right because it is, okay? <laughs> it is. But we can't get past this. This is something I can't get over. I hope you ain't got over it. How can I be saved? That's the first question that Jesus answered. How can I be saved? I'll be honest with you, I know some of y'all in here. I, I know a lot of your faces, and I know some of you by name. But there's only one person in here that I know is saved. Only one. I know a bunch. Of, I, I remember a bunch of your faces. And I believe by some of your testimony, I believe you're probably saved. But there's only one that I believe my wife's saved. Most times. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. The only person I know 100% sure, you're looking at him. It's me. You may be here today and you may be saved. And you know what I say? Hallelujah. That's what I say. I say, thank God. I'm glad you know that you're saved. But the question, how can I be saved? Maybe it may need to be asked in some of you. There may be somebody here this morning that you can't say for 100% certainty. That you know that you are saved. If you're not saved, can I just time out? I got good news. I know how you can be. Man, I'm glad Jesus made a way on a hill called Calvary. The Bible says in Acts chapter number 4, verse number 12, neither is there salvation in any other, 
There's none other name under heaven given among me and whereby you must be saved. I love that verse of scripture. There may be someone here this morning saying, how can I be saved? I believe probably one of the greatest or most prevalent questions in our society is not, maybe not how I can be saved. They don't know that terminology. They just want to know how they can get to heaven. Right? How can I get to heaven? How can I be saved? You, or, well, let me tell you, there's another way to ask that question. How can I escape hell? I thought about that one before I got saved. I thought about that one just as much, if not more, as how can I get into heaven? Salvation is it's more than a fire escape, but it is a fire escape. <laughs> how can I be saved? That's, a, that's an important question. I hope you've asked it. I hope you know the answer for your own self. Let me tell you something. The only way is Jesus Christ. That's the only way. You know what? If it was up to my good works, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> if it was up to how good of a, a singer I was or how good of a daddy I was or how good of a preacher I was, I'd be in big, big trouble. If it was up to how good you were, you'd be in trouble too. Let me get off me. It was making me feel bad. I'm going to get on y'all. If it was up to how good you are, you'd be in trouble. Because ain't nobody good. The Bible says in Romans 3.10, there's none righteous, no, not one. Go 13 verses later, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Ain't nobody good. <laughs> we all say amen real loud right there. Ain't nobody good. Ain't nobody deserve to go to heaven. Nobody. If you think you do deserve to go to heaven, you probably ain't going. That was pretty rough right there. It's the truth, though. Ain't nobody deserve to go to heaven. But I'm glad that he made a way. The Bible said in John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. It's not a way. Can I say that? It's not a way. It's the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's not an option. There's not multiple doors to heaven. There's one way, and it's Jesus. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse number 11, one of my favorite verses in all the Bible, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. I'm going to say that again. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. For there is one God, according to Timothy 2.5, there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 5, verse 25, Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost, to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever, leave, ever liveth to make intercession for them. You can't go any other way. You can't go any other way. Hey, man, you can't go any other way. He is the only way. I'll say it like this. This is how the old timers used to say it. It's Jesus or it's hell. You say, preacher. This is a good church. We've got a good preacher. We hear this preaching all the time. Everybody in here say, well, I know you. this is a good church. I know this is, you've got a great pastor. But you know what? You still need to know that he's the only way. You still need to hear that he's the only way. You may be in here and you never asked Jesus to save you. Guess what? There's one way. There's one way. I promise you, I'd rather be in Psalm 46 telling you about how God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. That's where I wanted to go this morning. That's not where God's got me this morning. He wanted me to tell you that He's the only way. There's no other way. You can try your good works. You can try being a good person. There's no other way. There's no other way. How can I be saved? He said, I am the way. I mean, then He asked you this, answered this question. How can I be sure? How can I be saved? He said, I am the way. How can I be sure? He said, I am the truth. Yes, I am the truth. I believe that there's a lot of people that are saved, but they ain't sure. I've been there. I ain't there now, hallelujah, but I've been there. Maybe you've never doubted your salvation. If you've never doubted your salvation, I want to shake your hand after church, okay? Do you know what? That's a miserable life to live. Not sure that you're saved. And he answered the question. 
Preacher, how can I be sure? He said, I am the truth. Can I just be real honest with you just for a second? If I wasn't 100% sure, 100% sure, I'm not talking about 95, that's a pretty good percentage. If I wasn't 100% sure, I'd say, there's no way. And I'm not saying that because I'm up here. I'm saying that because I'm, I'm genuine in my statement. If I wasn't 100% sure, I'd say, ain't no way I'd leave this building today. Ain't no way I'd get in a car. <laughs> there ain't no way I'd live in this world. Not being 100% sure, I say, ain't no way. You don't know what tomorrow, know what tomorrow holds. You don't know what this evening holds. There is no way I'd walk out of this building not sure I saved. Oh, God, we got to be sure. You need to be sure that you're saved. You say, preacher, why? Well, I've heard this all my life. I'll say it again. Hell's too hot. Heaven's too sweet. And eternity's too long. For you not to be sure that you're, so, that you're saved. It ain't a maybe so or a think so. It ain't a hope so salvation. It's a no so salvation. Do you know 100%? Do you know? Do you know? I'm asking you this morning. Do you know that you're saved? If you died right now. This is different than I really want to preach this morning. I hope you know that. This is what, I wouldn't be doing this if I knew God would want me to do this. Do you know 100% sure if you died right now? If you died right now. Do you know you're saved? You say, preacher, we're probably all saved in here. All right. Let's take it that everybody in here is saved. I doubt that's true. But let's take it. Everybody in this building say. Why don't you raise your hand if this is you. Who in here knows somebody? Who in here knows somebody? If Jesus were to come back right now, or if that person were to die, that, they, that you know by their testimony that they're not saved. Who in here is like that? I'm raising my hand because I... Good night. See, there's two applications. If you're saved, this message is for you too. Because there's people dying on their way to a devil's hell. And when's the last time? When's the last time you went and told them, Hey, I just want to tell you something. I love you. And because I love you, I want to tell you that you don't have to die and go to hell. When's the last time you did that? I'm preaching to me too because that that hit me too, okay? Them bullets are flying off the wall everywhere, and I got hit by one too, okay? When's the last time you did that? Say, preacher, how can I be sure? Jesus answered that. He said, I am the truth. I'm glad that you can not only be saved, but you can have blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I love that song. I'm glad I'm not just saved. I'm glad I'm sure. I'm glad if I died right now in this pulpit, there's not one doubt in my mind where I'd wake up. My eyes would open in glory, friend. That'd be all right with me. I'm just being honest with you. It wouldn't hurt my feelings because I know I'm sure. I'm sure I'm saved. I told you I wish I could, I, well, I wish I could stand up here and tell you I never doubted. I can't. But you know what I do? There have been times when I didn't know. I wasn't sure. He said, I am the way. That's how to be saved. Then he said, I am the truth. That's how to be sure. Can I give you some, some advice if you ever doubt your salvation? He said, I am the way, the truth. You know what the truth is? Right there. That's the truth. Now, let me give you some good advice, okay? If you ever doubt your salvation, you don't have to answer. But if you ever get in a situation where you ain't sure, just open it up. Open it up. Open it up and read it. You say, preacher, where should I go read? It don't matter. Just open it up and read it. Because, friend, <laughs> well, I'm about to shout. I really am. Whenever I'm not, when I'm going through a hard time and I'm doubting whether or not I'm saved, it ain't happening in a while. Hallelujah. I've got it settled. I hope you do. But you know what? In those times, you know what I'd do? I'd open up this book. And I'd get in it. And I'd read it. You know what happened? There'd be something on the inside of me, friend, that man, they'd try to get out. Go to the truth. How can I be? You say, preacher, you're going to confuse somebody preaching like that. No. You don't know if you're saved or not? Open up his word. Open up his word. 
That's the truth. I'm telling you that right there. How can I be sure? Right there's the truth. Right there is the detector. That'll help you. That's how you can know. Well, I'm going to say it anyway. When's the last time you picked it up? When it wasn't Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. I wasn't supposed to preach on that, but I'm going to anyway, brother. When's the last time you picked that up? When's the last time you read one, one chapter? When's the last, when's, well, <laughs> man. Well, I think I made some of you mad. I didn't mean to. I'm just trying to help you. When's the last time you picked that up and read it? We do call ourselves Christians, don't we? Some of you are looking at me like I'm crazy. You don't know what? That right there is where it's at. That's how you can be sure. That's the truth. That's the truth. In a world full of lies, every once in a while I need some truth. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I've really just turned off the news. I don't care one thing about watching anymore. But you know why? There ain't nothing but a bunch of junk. It's a bunch of lies on both sides. I'll say that right there, just so you know where I stand. On both sides is lies. You ain't going to fight it in there. <laughs> when you get aggravated in this world with all the lies and all the fake, just go to his book. Just go to his book. That's the remedy. <laughs> That's the cure for you to be sure. Somebody put that on a t-shirt. That's the cure right there. That's how you can know. That's how. That's a Jeremiah Simpson special right there. That's, that is how you can know. I was making sure y'all was still awake. How can I be saved? I am the way. How can I be sure? I am the truth. I'm glad this morning that I know, that I know, that I know, that I'm saved. I'm glad there's something on the inside of me that's saying, that's right, that's right. They ain't nothing like that in the whole world. There's no peace that this world can offer you like the peace that, God, that you get from God's Word. They ain't nothing in this world. Hallelujah. Man, I'm glad for His peace. I'm glad I'm sure. You can't convince me I'm lost. You can't. The devil can't even convince me I'm lost. You know why? Because God's already convinced me I'm saved. You can't. It's a good place to be. It's a real good place to be. That you know, that you know, that you know, that you saved. My grandpa, actually my great grandpa, Olin Barker, he used to say this. Of course, a lot of people say this, but that's who I heard say it first, so that's who I'm giving props to. There's only one thing better than being saved. That's being saved and knowing being saved is great. But there's something better than being saved. That's being saved and being sure that you're saved. You say, but preacher, how do you know you're saved? Let me ask you this. How do you know you're alive? Well, 336-469-69 something something. I'm not telling you my mama's number. 69 something something. Hey, mama. I don't know some of you. I ain't giving you my mama's cell phone number. Hey, mama. Uh, I got a question. How do I know I'm alive? No, I know. I, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. I know that hospital down there in Concord. And I, I know you was there, Daddy was there. I know. Yeah, I know the doctor said I was the prettiest baby had ever been in that hospital. I know that. <laughs> I, get, <laughs> I get all that, Mom. I get it. I know. But how do I know I'm alive? I know, June 2nd, 1996. Why well, y'all look at me like I'm crazy for? Because that's dumb, ain't it? You know how I know I'm alive? You see it right there? I won't ever get to that high again. That hurt. But you know what? That's how I know I'm alive. Ain't that crazy? How do I know I'm alive? I woke up this morning. My eyes opened. My hands started moving. My feet were moving. I got up and walked. I was breathing. I woke up. I said, Preacher, how you know I'm how you know you're saved? How you know you're saved? Well, June 22nd, 2013, I was 17 years old in State Road, North Carolina, and I asked the Lord to No, 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 no. I'm glad for that time. Just like I'm glad for June 2nd, 1996. 
where God blessed the world. I'm just kidding. Where I was born. Do you know what? More than when I was 17 years old when I got saved. More than that. This morning. Guess what? Opened up his word. You're not saved by feelings. Let me just say that. But I'm going to say this. If something as the devil moves out and God moves in your soul, you're going to feel something. Amen. I'm just being honest with you. I could feel it. I opened up his word and he started talking to me. I got up this morning. It was like it just kind of happened. I got up this morning and I tied this tie and I didn't even do it in front of a mirror. It's happened. Probably because I wear one every day, but that's not the point. Do you know what? I'm alive. I got more proof. Listen to me. I got more proof that I'm saved this morning than I could take you back when I was 17 years old and I got saved. I got more proof today that I'm saved. I know that I'm saved. How do you know? That's the question to you. I'm really way away from my notes. That's okay. How do you know? Don't take me to 1937 at Bible school when you was nine years old. I don't know how you know today. When's the last time God told you you was one of His? <laughs> I remember I was, I was a, I wasn't very young, but I was, I was, I think I was, might be 12. I think I was 12 years old. My dad was in a revival in Walnut Cove, North Carolina. And, uh, is Meadows Baptist Church. It was supposed to be a three-night meeting. We went Monday night and sang. I'll be real honest with you. It was pretty dead. <laughs> it really was. Tuesday night we went. It was a little bit better. It was a little bit better. Wednesday night came. It was pretty good. As, as a, if I remember right, as a lady got saved that night. And uh, Brother Craig was on the platform. It's a, it a really cool-looking church, honestly. It's wide. It's huge. It's like this right here. And it's not real deep, but it's about, it's just shaped. Pew, pew. It's real weird looking. You don't forget things like that when you're 12 years old. Well, I was sitting over here with Daddy. He had just got done preaching. But Craig looked at him and said, can you be back tomorrow night? Dad said, sure, yeah, I'd love to. Come back that Thursday night. 26 people got saved on that Thursday night. I'll never forget that as long as I live. One of the most amazing services I've ever been in my life. It was It was amazing. These people just kept coming to get saved. It was unbelievable. Never been anything like it. And, uh, well, in that meeting, it went three or four more weeks. as 70-some saved. After that meeting closed, it's six weeks after that, uh, it had over 125 people saved in that church. Unbelievable. And uh, I'll never forget about the second week of that meeting on the right-hand side of that church, right through, right in, right in there. I remember there's an older lady come in. Her son went to church there. And uh, she, they rolled her in. She was, uh, uh, she, I'm trying to remember her age. She was 80, I think she's 83. She come in, rolled in that right side of that church, and her name was Miss Hill. She come in, and she'd hear my dad preach, and she'd sit there in that wheelchair. Well, one night, right before service, my dad and the pastor was in the foyer. <coughs> and uh, she come in. And she made a beeline right to my dad. I remember just like it was yesterday. She made a beeline right to my dad. And she looked up at him and pointed that old finger at him. said, I need to talk to you. And, uh, you know, he said, okay. And he talked to the pastor. And the pastor stayed in the foyer. And they went to the, started talking. Well, he couldn't really hear her. And so he said, let's go to Sunday school class. So they went into a Sunday school classroom. And she started talking to him. And, and they got around to the point And she said, I, I'm not sure I'm safe. And you've been talking about this. You've been preaching about knowing you're saved and, and knowing you're going to heaven and knowing this and knowing and knowing. And I don't know for sure that I'm saved. And he looked at her and, and my dad said this, this question. I'll never forget this story. He looked at her and said, Miss Hill, what is your hope of heaven? How do you know you're going to heaven? What is your hope of heaven? And he said that he, she looked back up at him, didn't say a thing, with a blank stare on her face. And my dad said, well, Miss Hill, how do you know you're going to heaven? How do you know you're saved? And she, couldn't, she couldn't answer it. She finally said this. She said, well, when I was 12 years old, she, went, she had been a member of the Methodist Church her whole life. She said, when she was 12 years old, she said, they took me down to the river, and they baptized me when I came up. 
They said I was ready to go to heaven. 12 years old. She's 83 in this, at this time. I can't spell Anna, but I can do math. That's 71 years. That's a Sunday school joke. Do you know what? 71 years she lived with that. 71 years as that for her hope of heaven. You know what she did that night? She got saved. <laughs> Less than a year later, we was in Pigeon Forge, and my dad's phone rang. It was her son, Brother Hill. And he, less than a year later, she died and went to glory. Less than a year. That's not a long time. She, wasn't, she lived all that time not being sure. How you know? How you know? I'm done. I really am. I'm almost done. He answered, how can I be saved? He said, I'm the way. How can I be sure? He said, I'm not going back up there because I'll preach 30 more minutes. How can I be sure? He said, I am the truth. Then he answered another question. He said, how can I be satisfied? He said, I am the life. How can I be saved? I am the way. How can I be sure I am the truth? But how can I be satisfied? He said, I am the life. That's three questions you need to ask yourself today. Are you saved? He's the only way. Are you sure? You can go to the truth. You need to go to the truth. Are you satisfied? I can promise you one thing. If you try to live and be satisfied in this world, you'll come up short. I promise you, you'll come up short. But I'm telling you one thing. There's no life. There's no life like living for Jesus. John 10, 10 said, The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. I am come that you might have life. You might have it more abundantly. I'm glad this morning that I'm not just saved. I'm not just sure. I'm glad I'm satisfied. I'm glad. Man, I'll tell you what. Lord's good job down you. I'm glad I know that I'm saved. But more than that, I'm living the best life there is. I get to wake up beside a beautiful lady that's real big right now. She's big. She ain't in here so I can say that. She's 35 weeks pregnant. She's big. But you know what? I wouldn't trade it for nothing. That's our third one on the way. You know what? I got three babies. I got three. She ain't here yet, but she's here. But you know what? I get to do what I love. I get to travel and sing. I get to preach. I get to teach the youngins every week, every day, basically, in school. You say, well, Richie, you sound pretty happy. I couldn't be more happy. You know why? Because the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. You may be here and you've never been saved. Can I tell you this? I'm done. Miss Stephanie's actually coming to the piano, so I'll quit preaching. You may be here and you're not saved. Today, today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. You may be here and you're not sure. Somebody, If you'll come up here, somebody can take the truth and show you how you can be sure. But it may be, you may be here today and you're not satisfied. That, she's going to begin playing whenever she's ready. That right there, that is probably the most important question in our world besides how can I be saved. How can I be satisfied? You know why? Because our world, our society, the people in our country and our society, they're looking for everything. They're looking for everything to satisfy them. They're going to drugs and alcohol. I mean, I could name a bunch of them I ain't going to. They're looking for everything to satisfy them. Hey, let me tell you something, church. We've got something that will satisfy them. We've got something that can satisfy them. You know what we need to do? Good night. You know what we need to do? We see those people hurting. We see those people that are not satisfied, living an empty life, miserable. You know what we need to do? We need to go give them this. Because this is the way. This is the truth. This is the life. How can I be saved? I am the way. How can I be sure? I'm the truth. Hallelujah. How can I be satisfied? He's alive. Let's stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed.
Tá?